It's time for the Douglas Coleman Show. Smooth and Savvy is joined by some of the hottest talent in the entertainment industry. From musicians to authors and all those in between. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mr. Smooth and Savvy himself, Douglas Coleman. Howdy, howdy, oh, hey, 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 he, he, ha. Welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show. It's me, Douglas Coleman. Thank you for being here. Today, we've got a uh, bunch of stuff. <laughs> we've got Pavlina Asta. Uh, Pavlina has done so many things in her relatively young life. She just turned 19, she told us, that we had to come up with a title for her because we just didn't know what to call her. And if we had to list everything she's accomplished, it would have been two paragraphs long. So we came up with entertainment media personality, which in the interview she said she liked. So we're using that. So entertainment media personality, Pavlina Asta will be here. Before we get to Pavlina, we've got music by a music x-ray artists. We've got four songs to play today, which I'm very excited about. Thank you so much to everyone who has submitted. Before we get to the music and before we get to Pavlina, I did want to talk just a little bit about the new addition to my family. You may have seen on Facebook, I've been posting pictures of a new puppy. We're real excited that we've got him. We had one dog already. We have a four-year-old Shih Tzu Poodle mix, and he's a very cute little dog, but he is a little dog. He is nine pounds, and he's got sort of short, stubby little legs, but he can run very fast. We thought that it would be good to get another dog so that he would have a playmate. It's been sort of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, they do play, and when we put them out in the yard, they wrestle around and run around and chase each other, and as all dogs do, play the dominance game to who is the alpha male. The little dog, for sure, is the alpha male, or at least he thinks he is, always tries to dominate the puppy. When we got the puppy, the puppy is a German shepherd, They were the same size. We got the puppy at two months old. When we got him home, he was the same size. Been two months. He's now four months old. He's two and a half times the size of the little dog and four times the weight. We just weighed him. He is 40 pounds now. The vet predicts he's going to be at least 80 to 90 pounds, perhaps 100 pounds, and he's going to grow at least double in size from where he is now. He's going to be a giant thing which is great. The one thing that I found very interesting about changing the social dynamic from one dog to two dogs is the emotional complexity of these dogs. I didn't realize they were as emotionally complex as they are exhibiting. They have a lot more depth than I really thought they did. For example, the little dog got extremely jealous when we brought the puppy in, and he started exhibiting passive-aggressive behavior. He was great to us, always very sweet. We made separate beds for them because we didn't want to force them together because on the very first day we brought the puppy home, the other dog was not pleased, and he kind of attacked the puppy and growled and tried to bite him, and the puppy ran away scared. So we had to assimilate them together very slowly. They seem to be okay now. However, while they're sleeping in their separate beds on the floor in the living room, as any dog owner will tell you, they have all kinds of little squeaky toys and chewy toys and things for their dogs. The little dog will get out of his bed, sneak over to the puppy's bed while the puppy's sleeping, and steal all of his toys. And he'll take one at a time, back to his own bed, bury him under the cushion in the bed, (laughs) and then get on top of the cushion as if he's trying to hide the toys. So I didn't think this was very fair. So I would get over there and take the toys back and put them back into the puppy's bed. After a couple of times when he knew that I was going to come over and take the toys, he stopped doing it. A few days went by. They were sleeping in their respective beds. I got up to go to the kitchen. When I returned, the other dog had snuck over to the puppy's bed and stolen all the toys and buried them in his bed. 
So he was smart enough to wait for me to leave the room before he did his little covert operation. And I thought to myself, passive aggressive in the most primary sense. So I've learned a few things from these dogs. It helps me to better understand human behavior, to see it in its kind of simplest form like that. I certainly have worked with people in office situations who are very passive aggressive. Okay, the music is next. We've got four songs. First one up is Love Remains by Savannah. Next is Start Up the Love Machine by Mighty Doug Young, followed by Joshua by Leah Capel, and finally, Somehow by Shay and Jay. <laughs> i 
coffee grounds clutter around our feet We're speeding through the desert Nothing but stardust I'm not quite a runaway But suffering from wanderlust Sometime without a doubt Someday we'll all work out Somehow, someway, sometime That day is gonna come my way Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been thinking, I've been trying I've been wondering how to find the time And dreams and 
To Mr. Smooth and Savvy, right here on the Douglas Coleman Show. We'll be right back after these commercial messages. Acclaimed author of Garden, Jane Yates brings you the first book in a new trilogy, Octopus Pirate, a story of a foundling who has unusual talents, such as the ability to communicate with octopuses. As a baby, he was washed up on an island off the Scottish mainland. An eccentric former nun who lives alone with cats brings him up. He joins a circus and narrowly escapes plots against him. Flees to Cornwall, builds a replica pirate ship that's also an airship to travel back in time to fight real pirates. Get your copy today from Amazon, only 99 cents. Hi there, this is Stuart Epps from the UK, record producer, engineer, uh, you might have heard of me. I've worked with artists from Elton John to Led Zeppelin to uh, Bad Company, Twisted Sister, Robbie Williams, Oasis, many, many great bands and artists in the past and the present and uh, hopefully in the future. But uh, you can work with me as well. You know, all you got to do is get in touch with me on epsmusicproductions.com. That's uh, E-double-P-S productionsmusic.com. Uh, And I can help you with your productions and with your recordings. Uh, A lot of people do home recordings now, which you can only take so far. Maybe they need a bit of professional help. So uh, get in touch with me and we can sort it out. And thanks for Douglas Coleman for giving me the spot. Thanks a lot. Cheers, bye. DJC Music and DJC Productions are pleased to announce a brand new website. We have started a listing website for radio show hosts as well as potential show guests. This is a meeting site where hosts and guests can come together. Show hosts can list their show and types of guests they're interested in booking. Potential guests can list their talents, bio, accomplishments or anything they feel makes them an interesting radio show guest. There are no recurrent payments, only a one-time $5 listing fee. Your listing will stay up until you decide to cancel. Previous guests of the Douglas Coleman Show are welcome to submit their guest listing free of charge. Go to radiohostsandguests.com. That's radiohostsandguests.com. 
Go listen, download, and subscribe to The Douglas Coleman Show. It's available at the website douglascolemanmusic.com slash DCS. Also on iTunes, Spreaker, and YouTube. The Douglas Coleman Show is an internationally syndicated talk and music show that features fascinating and sometimes famous guests from all aspects of the entertainment industry. The topics can range from light and fluffy to sober and serious. Our focus is on music artists, but we also feature producers, authors, directors, and even promoters. The Douglas Coleman Show. Sometimes chat, sometimes music, always entertaining. Again, it's available today at the website douglascolemanmusic.com slash DCS. You can also connect with them on Facebook at Douglas Coleman Show 1. Follow on Twitter at Douglas Coleman 3. And you can even find them on TuneIn Radio. Again, that's the Douglas Coleman Show at the website douglascolemanmusic.com slash DCS, iTunes, Spreaker, YouTube, and more. Go listen, download, subscribe, and share with your social networks today. And now... Hey, Rocky! Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat! Again? Nothing up my sleeve! Crystal! <laughs> no doubt about it, I gotta get another hat! Now here's something we hope you'll really like! Okay, please welcome my very special guest, Pavlina Asta. Hello, Pavlina, how are you? Hi, I'm great, how are you doing? Oh, doing very well. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I was yes, thank you so much for having me. Looking forward to speaking with you after I read through your bio. Pretty amazing how much stuff you've accomplished in your... Uh, you're 20 years old, yeah? Um, Actually, I just turned 19. Oh, my goodness. Okay, <laughs> even younger than I thought. All right. Yeah, yeah. Your, your accomplishments here are quite stunning, quite wonderful. I did want to try to... Thank you so much. I wanted to ask you, though, with everything you've done and are doing... I was trying to think of a title for you. What what do you consider yourself? If somebody says, well, what do you do? Yeah, you know, I I usually have to give them a pretty extensive answer whenever when someone's like, oh, like, what do you do? Um, but I guess, like, overall, it would be radio personality or, like, celebrity radio personality because my show is about interviewing celebrities and everything. Um, but I'm also a columnist on the Huffington Post. And then um, I produce you know, um, a national, a nationally syndicated radio show. So it's just kind of like, there's, there's a couple different hats that I wear. Um, so I'm like, well, here's, here's all of it. And then, you know, people usually take what they want and everything. So yeah, but I usually just say, you know, ra- radio personality. Yeah, that's a big mouthful if you have to tell them everything you've done or are doing. Yeah. I came up with entertainment media personality. Oh, I like that. That's good. Yeah? I'm going to use that. Okay. Because that's how I yeah, was going to... Yeah, use that. I was going to put that down uh, when we promote your appearance on the show. I was just going to call you entertainment media personality, Pavlina Asta. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Okay. I, I might start using that. Entertainment media personality. It works. I okay. like it. All right, great. Well, I'm glad you like it. So we'll <laughs> use that. Thank you. That's, uh, otherwise, we have to write two paragraphs <laughs> before exactly. your name as yes. to what you've done. Give us a little bit of background on yourself. I'm curious, uh, you know, where you grew up and what you did as a kid and how you kind of got to this point in your life, if you would, please. Yeah, of course. Definitely. Um, So I grew up in Daytona Beach, Florida, and I, you know, normal childhood and everything, fun stuff. You know, I did dance for a long time. Then um, I started playing steel drums, and I was uh, I just started playing on the beaches of Daytona Beach just because I thought it was fun. And I was getting interviews by local radio stations and, you know, because it was this weird thing that I was doing, this, you know, little white girl basically playing steel drums on the beaches. Um, and I started getting radio interviews by local radio stations. And then this radio manager of one of the stations that I was, they, they just they kept interviewing me. It was really funny. So they kept having me on. So he was like, you're always in the station. You should have your own show. And I was just like, okay, like, that would be fun. You know, my 11, at the time I was only 11. So I was just kind of like, my 11 year old self was like, that sounds awesome. Uh, so I uh, started a 15 minute radio show and it was awful because I had nothing to talk about. It was like nothing happened when you're 11. <laughs> so I started doing interviews to, you know, help fill up the time and everything. And usually no one comes to Daytona Beach just because it's Daytona Beach, unless you're like a NASCAR driver, you know, it's not really a hot spot for celebrities. And, um, but you know, the next week, Kevin Jonas, and when I was 11, the Jonas Brothers were like the biggest thing. So Jonas, or um, sorry, Kevin Jonas came to 
Daytona Beach, which was a huge thing. So I went to one of the meet and greets. I told his manager that I had an interview with him, which I did not have an interview with him. Um, but he granted me, you know, five minutes of, uh, you know, five minutes of Kevin's time uh, to do a quick interview. So I interviewed him, and that's kind of how the celebrity interviews started. It was like Kevin Jonas, and then Vince Carter, and then it's kind of snowballed from there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how that's how the radio show started, and that's how like the I started interviewing celebrities, and now it's been over, you know, 600 major celebrities. Um, I've won a Guinness World Record, or I, I guess I got a Guinness World Record um, with doing the most interviews in 24 hours, which was 347 interviews, um, you know, in one day. And then uh, I wrote a book <laughs> somewhere in between there. It's just like it's been it's been pretty crazy. And then my senior year of high school, um, I was offered a job in New York. Um, so you know, going from Florida to New York is a pretty big deal. So I, I obviously took it, and. Um, yeah, so I spent my senior year of high school up here, and I just started college. So, so yeah, it's been it's been a very fun and very interesting uh, ride, I guess. So, but yeah, it's been great. Now, the the radio station that picked you up in Florida, they sent you out to do interviews yeah. at eleven years old. They didn't really send me out. It was more like I sent myself out. <laughs> it was just kind of like they just gave me the fifteen minutes, and then later on, you know, thirty minutes, and then an hour. But um. They just kind of gave me the time slot, and then I, I just had to fill it. And I the way I filled it was with interviews. And now, like, my favorite thing to do is to interview people. So, um, so yeah, it's just kind of – I guess they technically sent me out because they did give me the spot. But, like, but yeah, that's how I decided to fill, fill my 15 minutes. Now, did you go alone, or did your mom go with you? Or Yeah, so <laughs> my family's never really been involved in what I do. Like, they're incredibly supportive. Um, so my mom would always, you know, drive me to the venue or whatever, wherever I was going. Um, but she would never go in with me, so I would always I would go in by myself. She'd be like, drop me off and tell me to do good, and then be like, okay, I'll you know come back in an hour or whatever. And um, yeah, so I would I would always go in by myself, and I you know obviously Tom would be very independent, which was great. Um, yeah, so I would I would basically go in alone, and then my mom just kind of would take me to all the different red carpets and um, events and everything. Well, I mean, I just find that amazing. Because I'm thinking back, I'm I'm a good deal older than you, <laughs> and I'm thinking back to when to when I was 11 years old, and I mean I had a paper route, that was you know the high point mm-hmm. of, of my life at 11 years old. I couldn't even imagine going yeah. uh, doing interviews with uh, you know rock stars and pop stars and things. That's just it's mind blowing to me. But I'm I'm happy that you did that. I think it's wonderful. But it's just something that I would never guess you know, that an 11-year-old would be, number one, sort of capable of doing that. I mean, did you have questions right. written out and everything for this? Or did you just kind of wing it as you went? Yeah. Around? Well, now I more or less wing it, I guess. I, I just kind of go in. I, I basically know what I want to talk about. And then I just kind of come up with whatever, you know, I, I come up with. But when I first started, I was like, I wasn't really nervous doing the interviews. It's just like I, I was just, un, I just wasn't used to it. So, um, I had a steno pad and um, obviously when you start something, you're very bad. And I was obviously very bad <laughs> um, when I first started and I had this like steno pad and I would write out all of my questions, like, you know, word for word. And I would, you know, most of the time, especially when I first started, I would just like stare at the, <laughs> at the, um, the steno pad. And I would just be like, um, you know, do my little intro, like, hey, everyone, it's Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Place, or, you know, because it was started out as Pavlina's Kids Place, now it's called Pavlina Show. Um, but, yeah, so it, I would, you know, read off my questions, and then the person would answer, and I'd be like, okay, good. And then so that was it. Like, that was how I how I started it, um, I guess. But, yeah, in the beginning, I definitely wrote out uh, my questions, and then it's got, like, less and less, I guess. So I would do bullet points, and now I kind of, like, have bullet points every once in a while. Like, if it's, like, a red carpet and I need to remember certain things and I'll do bullet points. But most of the time I just kind of go in <laughs> cold turkey now. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was really interesting when I first started. I had everything all written out. I'm wondering if the people that you interviewed were equally as stunned when you came in to interview them. You know, they'd be like, well, who is this little kid coming in? Did you get yeah, kind of a definitely. surprised look from some people or did they just kind of go, oh, this is the one from the radio station? Yeah, it was kind of, it was a mix of both, really. Um, so if I was doing like like an on the fly interview, they were always like, "Wait, you're doing the interview? Like, what's happening?" You're like, 
you're like a kid. So um, I got a lot of, you know, surprise people. But a lot of times the interviews were arranged. So they were expecting, you know, this 12-year-old or, you know, if I was 13, like, you know, 13-year-old to come in um, to do this interview. And I think they were more impressed, like, afterwards. Like, oh, that was actually a great interview. Or, like, that wasn't completely terrible. So, um, so yeah, it was it was definitely interesting, I think, on their part. They were probably like, what, is, what am I doing? But But I had a lot of fun with it, so... Now, I'm looking over your list of people that you've interviewed, and you've interviewed some pretty big-name people. How did you manage to get these people to, to be interviewed? Because, you know, presumably they're pretty busy. Uh, what was your sort of gimmick to, to get them? Was it just the fact that you were young, that they, they decided to go with you? Um, right. So I don't know if it was necessarily that I was young. I, it could have been, you know, it could have been like, oh, we, we want this you know, 14 or however old I was, um, to interview me. But I also feel like you, you are right in the fact that they do have like a lot of like time, you know, time is always an issue. Um, but I would, I don't know. I would just like submit, you know, a media request. I'd send it out to them and then they would do the interview. And, um, yeah, it was usually pretty good and they usually liked me, which was always, you know, helpful. Um, but yeah, I would just send out a media request to whoever was in the Florida area um, before I moved up to New York. And um, yeah, so I would just kind of like send it out to see, see who would say yes and then go do the interview. The one interview, I did take a look at your YouTube channel. The one person I did want to ask you about was Tony Tennille. Uh You interviewed her. I've been a fan of theirs since the 70s. That was kind of the music I grew up with as a kid. And, you know, they had a couple of, Captain and Tennille had a couple of mega hits in the 70s. I mean, just they played it on the radio every 10 minutes. What was your interview with her like? I absolutely loved Tony Tennille. She was so sweet. Um, she actually lives in Florida. So if I was, if I lived in Florida, we could have totally have done it um, on location. But she was one of the few interviews that I actually did on the phone. And um, she was just very sweet. You know, she um, had just written her memoir. So I... Uh, we talked about everything that was in that memoir because I, re I read the book and then I, I just wanted to ask her all about it and her, you know, her relationship with her and the captain and just, you know, basically everything. Um, and we just kind of, we basically went through the book, which was, you know, really cool because it was like a 20 minute long interview. Um, but yeah, no, she was super sweet. And even after the interview, we talked and um, she told me different stories, you know, uh, with them backstage or like the different, you know, things that they would do. Um, on tour and stuff. So she, she was amazing. She was a lot of fun to talk to. Well, from the interviews that I've seen, and I didn't listen to yours yet, but I am going to, uh, maybe after we finish, I definitely want to listen to it. But I get the impression that she's very down to earth. You know, she's not really a very pretentious oh, yeah. person. She doesn't have a diva quality about her at all, it seems, which I, which is nice. I like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, Tony is very sweet. She is, she's definitely down to earth. You know, she lives in Florida, a couple streets down from her sister. She's got her dogs. She's, you know, she's very down to earth. I want to go back to that thing you said about Guinness Book of Records where you did how many interviews in one day? 300 something? Yes, 347 um, oh in 24 God. hours. So, so how did you manage that? It was crazy. Um, it was pretty nuts. So um, basically, in, in, I'm from Port Orange, Florida, and there's nothing that, that stays open for 24 hours. So there's a lot of rules when it comes to, um, again, it's with a world record. And one of the rules is that it has to be in a pub public place. So, and obviously, I, I had to do interviews, so I wanted it to be, um, you know, high traffic kind of area. And so what I decided to do was do it in front of a Walmart because Walmart's are 24 hours and it was around Thanksgiving. So lots of people were going in and out, which was great, you know, traffic wise. And so, yeah, that was kind of like where I decided to do it. And then I would just interview people on the side of that Walmart um, as they were going in or coming out or whatever. And yeah, so, somehow we got up to 347. I remember right after I finished because I knew I had, I had broke it. Okay. I think the person before me broke it around two fifty or so. So I knew I definitely had gotten it, but I, my goal was three fifty, And all I remember was it was nine o'clock like the next morning. And I was, I was like, I just need three more people. And like, we ran out of time, 
but and I, my mom was like, you know, we were driving home and I was exhausted because it had been 24 hours and I was I had stayed up and done interviews all night and um, she was like, you know, good job, like all this other stuff and then I was just like, yeah, but I could have done three more interviews. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it was just it was just really funny how. I was, I only cared about how I wanted to get three more interviews, but it was, it was a crazy, um, you know, preparing for it because there were so many rules that you had to, you know, watch out for. And then broadcasting it was insane because it had to be, you know, broadcasted live and then it had to be recorded and like recording something for 24 hours is quite difficult because you need to keep it, you know, there can't be any like time lapses or anything like that. So um, that was challenging. And then you couldn't repeat any question. So I had to come up with hundreds of questions um, and each person had to have five questions. They could not answer. They had to answer with a sentence. Like it couldn't just be like a yes or no. It had to be like a sentence long. So there was a lot of things um, to prepare for it, but it, it was great. It was a lot of fun to do. Well, just doing math in my head very quickly, you would have had to come up with almost 2000 questions, individual questions. Yeah. Right? It was a lot. It got to a point where at first I was kind of like, oh, like, I don't know, I would come up with like normal questions. And it got to a point where I was like, why do you think the sky is blue? Like, it was just like, <laughs> I just came up with random things, just like random topics. Because like, the questions didn't matter themselves. They just couldn't be repeating. So I, I ended up coming up with some, some fun stuff. But it was, it was definitely interesting trying to come up with all of those questions. Do you have a favorite interview out of all the people you've interviewed? And on your sheet here, it says over 250 celebrity interviews, which is pretty astounding. Do you have a favorite? Um, you know, actually, it's, I should probably update that. It's around 600 now. Oh, but my goodness. I, oh my gosh, there have been so many because, and it's so hard to say if I have a favorite because like I interviewed Kiss and like Gene Simmons is a complete crazy person. I absolutely love him. Uh, um, but then uh. there was also like Pete Seeger and Pete Seeger was this huge folk singer in like the 70s and he had that song Give Pete a Chan. Absolutely amazing. And then there was people like Laureen Arbus who is this huge media um, like guru basically and you know she was one of the first leaders of like or head of a network kind of thing. So there's just been so many um, amazing people at Katie Couric. You know, it's just like, oh, my gosh. I have a hard time, but I usually say Pete Seeger was one of my favorites because he was, like, 97, I think, before he passed away. Um, and he sang part of Give Peace a Chance with me. Or he, he, he sang part of Give Peace a Chance, like, to me. Um, and oh. I remember I, I'm obsessed with the Beatles. So he sang that with John Lennon, um, and that was, like, a huge thing. They just sang it over and over um, in front of millions of people. And I, I was, I, that's what I pictured while he was singing it to me. So it was like, it was just one of those really cool moments. Um, and we were just like in Battery Park and it was, it was really cool. Um, that does sound So yeah, cool. I, yeah, I think Pete Seeger is probably one of my favorites. Um, but there were, there were just so many great ones. I did see a clip that you uh, interviewed Steven Tyler. Or was that an interview yeah, or just Steven, a, oh my gosh. Or was that just he a quick pass? so there? sweet. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, what do you think? Oh, I just said that I, I wasn't sure how long the clip was because it just seemed like he was walking through or something. But was that a, a full interview or how long did you talk to him for? Um, about five minutes. So oh, okay. it was a full interview. Okay. And it was actually backstage, uh, which is probably, that's why it looked like he was walking through, but he was just backstage. We were at this radio convention and he had just um, done like a an, like an onstage interview kind of thing. And I just went, I didn't, that, that, actually, that interview was not scheduled. So when I went backstage, um, I kind of like looked at his bodyguard person, and I don't know what we had like this like telepathic thing with me and the bo the bodyguard dude, and um, he just kind of like stepped aside, and then he like let me talk to Stephen. It was really funny. Um, so and I asked him if I could do a quick interview with him, and then he, you know, he answered all my questions. So it was great. It was yeah, Stephen. Stephen's the best. He's he's really nice. I saw on your Twitter page that you were recently at the inauguration. Uh, how was that? What did, yeah. what did you do while you were there? Oh, my God. It was absolutely insane, but it was so amazing um, to just be a part of, you know, history changing like that. And it was it was crazy, <laughs> like to say the least. But 
I I was covering it. We I was sat on the front lawn of the Capitol. You know, I, I was in sitting seats. It was amazing. And then we went to different balls, and I got to cover, you know, the Michigan ball, the Vets ball, the Garden State ball, um, and the Great Gatsby ball. And the, each one was, like, so much fun in, like, its own way. Um, but, yeah, and, like, just being able to, like, go to the Smithsonian for the Michigan ball or um, – the natu- National Portrait Gallery for the Great Gatsby Ball. Like, it was just so such a great experience. Um, and when I turned, so I'm 19 now, but when um, I turned 18, I was just so excited to, to vote. Um, obviously, I didn't know who would, who would be running at the time, but I was excited to, you know, just be able to vote. And so voting and, or like having, going through like this whole process, like, you know, watching the election and everything, going through the primaries, um, and then being able to vote and then being able to be at the inauguration, it was just, it all worked out really great. And I, I'm so glad I was able to go. Did you get to interview Mr. Trump? No, no, I did not. It was so funny because I have a way with like getting myself interviews or whatever, like Steven Tyler, like, you know, I, I made that interview happen. It was just like certain things like that. Um, so when I came back to work um, on the national show that I produced, uh, they were like, oh, we saw that you didn't interview Trump or anything. I was like, really, guys? Like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, so they were giving me a hard time about that. But, but yeah, no, I did not interview Trump this time. Ne- next time. Next we'll, time. I'll try to get him next time. Well, I think to get to the president of the United States is probably a bit more challenging than to get to Steven Tyler, I would yeah, think. Yeah, it's definitely going to be – I'll have to talk, you know, talk my way through some Secret Service, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, he had a whole uh, whole gang of those guys. Um, but, yeah, it was a it was a good inauguration. I watched it on TV. I wasn't there, but uh, I've seen a lot of them now, and they're kind of all the same. The only thing that's really different about them is the speech. So you sort of wait for the speech to see if it's anything – new or different or different twist or something on it. But the, the protocol right, exactly. and the ceremonies are, the music is different. You know, they get to pick different music. Uh, personally, I like the music at Obama's in 2008 better than this one because he had Aretha Franklin mm-hmm. singing, which I thought was fabulous. The, this last one, I don't know. The music seemed a little, uh, I mean, it was good, but it was... More traditional, maybe, would be the better way to say well, it. Well, there was no one really that wanted to perform at the inauguration, yeah, so I that, think that was, was probably the biggest yep. issue. Yeah, that was another problem. So I think, I think yeah. they just kind of got who they could get, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think so. One of the questions I did want to ask you about, you've got something on here, says, aside from all the other things that you do, steel drum performer, a ballet dancer, National Girl Scout delegate, Tell me a little about that. What does a National Girl Scout delegate do? Right. Um, so I have been a Girl Scout for, I think, wow, over like 13 years now. It's, it's been a very long time. <laughs> um, but so, you know, Lifetime Girl Scout and everything, I've gotten my bronze, silver, and gold award, um, which is kind of like the Eagle Award. You know, it's like, a, it's like the biggest award in Girl Scouts to get your gold award. Um, and when when was it? I can't remember how old I was. I was... I was really young because everyone else was in college and I was like a freshman, I think. Um, But I got to go to Houston, Texas to be one of their delegates, um, which is basically where we vote on everything that happens in the Girl Scouts, you know, of America. Like it's just kind of like the different rules, the different uh, regulations and everything. It's just like every, everything that controls the world of Girl Scouts kind of happens at these, um, these events and they have different Girl Scout delegates. Um, They pick a couple from every state. So I was one of the five chosen from uh, out of all the whole state of Florida. I was like one of the five chosen to be a delegate. Um, And we spent like, I think it was like a week long, um, you know, and we just kind of like voted on different stuff and, you know, would stand up at the microphone and tell everyone what we thought about different things and different like leadership things that we should have for Girl Scouts and everything. Um, the different books that are published for Girl Scouts and stuff. So that was a it was a great experience, and I'm still a lifetime Girl Scout. So I always you know love that and everything. But um, but yeah, I was a Girl Scout delegate. Um, I think my freshman year of high school, freshman or sophomore year, I'm not really sure. But but yeah, that was that was a pretty crazy pretty crazy thing to do because it was this huge thing. And but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It also says you're a political enthusiast. 
I know we just talked about you going to the inauguration. Do you have any political aspirations for uh, later in your life? You want to run for Congress? Okay, so I used to be a page um, for the Florida House of Representatives and then later for the Senate, the Florida Senate. And I always thought that was fascinating. So I, I would love to, like, at some point try to run for um, either Congresswoman or, you know, something along those lines. I really i am still getting into politics and learning about it and everything. I don't know if I'd want to run in politics more or, like, rather than, like, talking about politics, like, on TV or something. You know what I mean? Like, I'd much rather talk about politics and be on that side rather than actually running for it. But, but yeah, I think I kind of want to go more into like the political side of, um, of broadcast journalism, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, it makes perfect sense. So you'd be uh, like on CNN or something doing uh, political editorials or something Exactly, like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's go back to the entertainment business for a second. I'm just curious. I, I asked this of people who are in the business and who have done different things. Is there anything about the entertainment business from what you've experienced that you don't like or you think should be improved on? Um, well, I think in general, it's a pretty, it's obviously a very tough business to be in. Um, and the people are very, you know, competitive. And we were actually talking about it today, just like um, at work and everything. Some There are some very fake people um, in, in like the entertainment business, I guess. Um, but it's just a very, I don't know. I think... People should, I don't know, it's just very, it's, uh, it's a hard question <laughs> just because there's so, um, I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of things wrong with the entertainment business, but there's also so many great things about the entertainment business. Um, and it's just kind of has worked on that, you know? You're right. It's a very difficult business. It's a very competitive business. It definitely is very competitive, but that's just kind of like how it is, you know? It's just kind right. of like it has to be that way. I think if you're delicate, you're not going to really survive in this business. You know, you've got to be pretty thick skinned. Yeah, you definitely have to have some rhino skin. Um, and you have to be able to take some punches from people and you have to be okay with that. So um, I would definitely tell anyone if they wanted to get into the, you know, entertainment business to, to get ready for some nose and to be okay with criticism. <laughs> I think that's definitely an important thing. Oh, yeah. It'll be a thousand no's and one yes. You know, exactly. If, if you're an actor. But then you have to like, Play off of that yes and make it into like other yeses while getting no's. You know, it's just like this whole thing. But but it's, it's such a great business to be in at the same time, you know? The first yes is the most difficult one, I think. Definitely. Oh, it definitely is. Because it's like, it's so hard to get that one person to believe in you. And then once you get that one person to believe in you, it's easier to get like other people to believe in you. Um, right. So, yeah, I completely agree. I think the first one's definitely the hardest. It'll, it'll snowball if you're lucky. After the first yes, <laughs> and then you'll just keep exactly, getting, you know, yeah. you keep getting, you play off the first yes. Well, it's like people who are actors, any of them, you know, the first film is always the most difficult. And then after that, they've got right. it on their resume. Well, I was in this film. Oh, okay. And then, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it's true. It's very true. You said you just turned 19, so you've got your whole life ahead of you. What do you want to be doing 20 years from now? You'll only be 39 years old. Oh, my goodness. Still pretty young. Right. Yes. Um, so I, oh, my gosh, 20 years. Well, okay, I first, you know, the next couple of years, I'd like to move um, into TV more. So I currently have my radio show. So I want to expand on my radio show and then move into TV, um, you know, start out maybe as like a contributor or something, start to get my own show, Um and then from like having my own show, I would really like to have like my own network, um, kind of like pull like an Oprah. I said I was just gonna say Oprah right when you said Oprah. I would yes. came into my head. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. And so, um, and then I would like to have you know my own network that has its own shows and it has you know my show on it and everything. And then um, I am like obsessed with fashion, so I want to have like a fashion line. And then. This is also super random, but like I'm like obsessed with stationery, like pens, like really good pens are just they make me it makes me so happy. So I'd want like a stationary line, which is super random and on the side, but whatever, it's there. And then um yeah, so I guess I guess I'd wanna have that network in twenty years. Um I'd wanna have like that's kind of what I would be aiming for. What kind of television show did you want to do? Like an interview show, a talk show? 
Yeah, I think a talk show would probably be what I think that's what I'd be best at is kind of like introduce someone and then, you know, interview them. Like definitely have an interview segment in there. Just like I love doing that. Um, but yeah, I think it'd, it'd basically just be like a talk show. How would you want to set it up? Like, like Ellen DeGeneres or like Oprah's show or? Yeah, you know, it'd probably, I've always said that it'd probably be like a mix between Ellen and Oprah because Oprah's always been more serious and then Ellen's more funny. So, but I'm not, I'm not as funny as Ellen, so that wouldn't work. And I'm not as serious and like philosophical as, as Oprah. So I feel like if I mix the two, it'd be like a great mix where it's, you know, funny, but then we can also get serious and like, you know, deep into stuff, but then we can also have some fun with it. So, um, so yeah, I think honestly mixing Ellen and Oprah would be perfect. <laughs> I think that would be like the best show for me. And do you want to have musical guests too? And they can come on and sing and. Oh yeah. We can have a huge variety. It'll, it'll just be like this huge, you know, every, everyone, um, from the biggest doctors that save people in Africa to, uh, the biggest band, um, you know, boy group or whatever. So it, it'll be a nice range of people, I think. Well, Pavlina, it has been super talking to you. What is the name of your show, of your radio show again? My show is called The Pavlina Show. And I think probably the best place to find, because it's nationally syndicated across the country, so it kind of depends on where you are. Um, but the best place to find like my celebrity interviews is on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Pavlina Asta. Okay. Now your radio show is terrestrial radio? Or is it online? Yes, it's terrestrial. Oh, so you're on FM stations, presumably, yeah? Yeah, but you can also go onto all of my social sites, which is also Pavlina, at Pavlina Asta. So. Now, the syndicated show that's on terrestrial mm -hmm. radio is the same programs that you have on YouTube? They're just broadcasting? Um, it's very similar, yes. Yeah, so my YouTube is actually just the interviews, um, but my actual show is obviously you know, the full show. So, um, but YouTube just has the interviews. Okay, but you're not doing it live, right, the show? My show, because of um, my work schedule and my school schedule, um, unfortunately, I'm not able to do my show live. Um, and it's just kind of always been that way because of, you know, middle school and then high school and now college. It's just really hard to have, like, an actual live show. Um, but it is, so it's pre-recorded and it's an hour long. Um, and then it's just once a week because of school. <laughs> okay. So, um, but yeah. So it's once a week and then it gets sent out to all the the different affiliates and then they they play it yeah. exactly yep your website again is pavlinaasta.com and that's spelled for people that, <laughs> that can't spell p-a-v-l-i-n-a-o-s-t-a.com yes pavlina thank you so much for coming on this was a real pleasure talking to you best of luck with all of your endeavors and i look forward to seeing your variety show sometime in the near future <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Well, that's about all the time we've got for the show today. I want to thank my special guest, Pavlina Asta, and thank you to the music x-ray artists, Savannah, Mighty Doug Young, Leah Capel, and Shay and Jay. This is Douglas Coleman saying goodbye. Do the man